Am I going to get let in? I have no idea. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Blake. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are Blake. Uh, it's very special for us to be here this evening, uh, especially for me. I've known Nick and Jai uh, for most of my life and, uh, and seen the, uh, the incredible journey that Braemar have been on. And, uh, and as you will see tonight, this, this journey is going to continue in some, some serious style with some, uh, an extraordinary reveal uh, in a bit after this song we're going to sing now. So um, we thought we should do something that is, uh, basically might, might wake you up from the heat if you had too many champagnes already. Uh, it's a big rousing number. Uh, uh, which is uh, often associated with victory and, and wonderful moments. And I think tonight, when you learn about what Bremont have been doing, you're going to be pretty amazed. So um, hopefully this is fitting. This is Nessun Dorma. Charles and I think of starting the aeroplane engines just to get it circulation going a little bit, but uh, apparently they're not allowed to have the air conditioning because of the exhibit, so there is a good reason for it. Um, when, when this museum started in uh, 1857, we're in the, we're in the flying, uh, obviously the flying exhibit room here, but when it started in 1857, um, I didn't know really quite anticipated the sort of the draw it would have, but now it has over two and a half million people here a year. Not all of the Bremel wearers, unfortunately, but, um, but it's, it's very, very special to, to be allowed to, to have an event in this area, so thank you very much for coming. I mean, just a couple of exhibits. I mean, the aeroplane there in the middle um, is the aeroplane Old Cock and Brown flew across the Atlantic, the first ever aeroplane to fly across the Atlantic in 1919. Um, you know, forget Spiritus and Lewis, this aeroplane here was, was, we did it the first, so that's very special. You've then got uh, the uh, Super Reen S6B, which in 1929 went 407 miles an hour for the Schneider Trophy, designed by R.J. Mitchell, um, obviously a designer of Spitfire. You then got this wonderful gypsy moth, Charles, hanging <laughs> on the ceiling here. Now this is Amy Johnson's gypsy moth that uh, in 1930 flew from England to Australia. Um, she too crashed it a couple times on the way. And I'm just a bit worried about my brother Nick a couple of parts a bit later, so if you see him creep up there, uh, do let us know. Um, before we get to the, sort of the real tonight, I just want to thank sort of two sets of people. One, uh, are the incredible staff we have at Bremont. It, it brings a huge smile to Giles on my face as every time we enter the, the, the workshops and we see everyone there, and it has grown quickly, but we're so pleased that almost you cut them through and they read Bremont. Um, and they're a wonderful bunch of people. They've worked so hard for tonight and for you know the event, but also the product to get there. Um, so thank you all very, very much. The second people I'd like to thank are the obviously the retailers who have supported us over the years. Uh, many of them here tonight, and thank you very, very much indeed. Um, the last 12 months um, has literally flown by for us. 
unless you're Giles, of course. Um, and sorry, it's a bit of a dig, a bit of a dig at Giles even tonight. Um, no, it's been very, very busy. I mean, it, it did start, unfortunately, with Giles back in sort of eight, uh, August time last year, having that awful aeroplane um, accident after the engine failure. And I would like to raise my glass to my brother's help. Yeah. Um, the slowed down version of my brother. And, and also to, uh, there's a, a James Nuttall in the audience, and that Ashley, who, whose son Oliver was in the airplane with Giles, and he's very well as well. So, Cheers. last photograph, this last images I saw of him is doing somersaults off the trampoline. So, he's obviously there. So, to your help. So, just a quick, quick chronology of the last 12 months, and I'll hand on to my brother. Um, so it started off back in September when we launched the sort of the Boeing release, the Boeing partnership, which we're immensely proud of. Very different from tonight, but Boeing was very special because they are the leaders in the world uh, when it comes to pretty much material research and the technology goes into aircraft design. And it was a very honor for uh, such a, well, I guess, an enormous American conglomerate and a, a real, um, I mean, their history reads like the Annals of Aviation. It's just, you know, they're 100 years old in a couple of years' time. They're an incredible organization. For them to want to work with us was a, a real uh, a feather in the cap. And, and to be work with their material research center up in Sheffield has been wonderful. We then had um, a rather special chap, one of our ambassadors, a chap called Ben Saunders. Is Ben here? Is it? Where is he? Oh, there he is. There he is. So Ben, with a hand up there, you'll have to mark him later, but Ben is a quite an incredible individual. He walked on foot, dragging his own food for 1,800 miles from Scott's Hut to the South Pole and back. It's taken eight years in the preparation, and he wouldn't have done it without the leadership on the gym front from Giles and I. Um, but uh, no, he's wearing a Terra Nova watch, which um, he used for navigation on the route. But, what he did cannot be underestimated. It was a phenomenal feat, and an honor to have you here today, um, Ben. So thank you very much for being here. Um, the net in sort of March, Basel time, we released another very, very special watch. It was the MB3. The MB3 is coming out in the next month, and this was the, the sort of the big brother to the MB2, a GMT version, and it's been an absolute joy for my brother and I to work with, and Bremer as a whole, to work with Martin Baker. They are the sort of pinnacle of British engineering, uh, save 7,500 lives to date. And I know uh, Andrew Martin is here tonight, he's a very shy guy, but he's just over there. Oh. <laughs> hey. Hey. So a uh, big thank you to Andrew Martin for all his support and uh, Martin Baker over the years. Um, and then just moving forward to this year, I hope you all sort of got your eyes and ears out. There's a very big film coming out. Uh, called Kingsman, uh, The Secret Service, which uh, is a film, uh, Matthew Vaughan movie with Colin Firth, Michael Caine, Samuel Jackson and a few others. Um, and Bremont is uh, features quite heavily, so make sure you go to the cinemas and have a little look. Um, and the last thing that I want to mention before I hand over to Giles quickly is the, the fact that we're, as a company, we're absolutely passionate about bringing this watchmaking back to the UK, which Giles is now going to talk to you a little bit about. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you, Nick. And, and I, uh, first, for me, a big thank you for all the support I got when I did have my crash. And um, amazing wife, Kate, who nursed me. Um, she loved it because it meant I didn't actually travel anywhere. I don't know if you've seen Misery when they broke the... Uh, yeah, mi Misery, it sort of reminds me of that. <laughs> the sort of uh, stuck in bed. No. Kate was amazing on, on that. And, and many thanks to Nick, who... Who, who worked his socks off uh, throughout that time. And, uh, actually, it's quite a nice break, a couple of months of bed. And so, uh, so now I'm feeling very good now. But um, uh, it's, it's, yeah, thank you all for wearing black tie as well. It's very rare we ever see Nick in any form of tie, or be vaguely smart. And I'm, and I'm not sure his tie has made it tonight. But, um, that, <laughs> but, I it myself. <laughs> what? Um, so he's, he's done very well to, to make it here in, in this in this heat. But we felt the black tie was really relevant to why we're here tonight. And um, this, we've worked on obviously many different limited editions since we did the EP120. Um, it sort of took off in that space. And, and we felt 
there was a demand for that. We felt um, uh, we hand on the arrow. Sorry, we felt there was a demand. We felt there was um, uh, a strong interest, and for us, creatively, creativity, um, it, it really made us develop as a business. So uh, a lot changed for us with the victory. Obviously, working with the Royal Navy and the charitable element, we went down that route, and obviously with the code breaker last year. But we're not going to do any of these things if Nick and I aren't utterly passionate about it. And we believe it's making an amazing watch in the process. Technically, we have to push ourselves. And on this watch, and as with every watch, movement-wise, we've really pushed ourselves forward. We feel on this watch, we've gone on to a new level. And Nick mentioned what we're doing with the UK. We're probably up to 60 people in Henley now. Um, that will uh, probably double over the next uh, two years. Um, with a new setup, new workshop we're building just outside Henley. We've got amazing machines that no one has ever had in the UK before or in any industry um, arriving. So it's, it's taking us big investments, but it's a very exciting process for us um, as we go through these next stages. So working on this passion with this limited edition and the reason why we're here will all become um, relevant very soon. And, and it's, it's something, as with all these projects, the more you get involved with it, the more passionate you become. And we spent the last couple of days um, with the people involved, um, seeing press and doing that sort of thing. And uh, this is something we really feel is, is push the boundaries. Now, obviously, put some pressure on us for next year and the following years. Um, but don't worry, Nick, I'll do it all as usual. But, uh, um, so what I would like to announce, um, and we have a little video I'd like to show you, it's called the right flyer. The project you're about to announce has been a long, long time in the making and you're about to see why. Um, in terms of aviation, we're starting to tread on very, very hallowed ground. We're very pleased to announce the Bremel Wright Flyer. The first flight was the event of the century. It not only redefined our world, it redefined the human spirit. It literally took us from the sands of Kitty Hawk to the lunar dust of the moon. For hundreds of years, man looked to the sky trying to figure out how to fly. So how was it these two unassuming bicycle builders from Dayton, Ohio succeed where the greatest scientific minds of the world fell short? Wilbur Wright, he was the theoretician, and Orville Wright was uh, someone who could take his brother's ideas and make it into something that you could hold in your hand. They developed three things that are still part of, you know, very basic aeronautical principles today. They understood the airplane had to balance on three axes in the air. Roll was the one that was very hard to understand. Um, so they developed a system of wing warping where the shape of the flyer's wings actually changed in the air just like birds' wings do. They thought about power and they thought about push. And they knew they needed some sort of um, propeller, but to date no propellers had ever been um, invented, at least for aeronautical purposes. So the brothers, by hand, carved out of wood, propellers that have only been um, improved upon by modern day standards, eight or 10%. They were both very interested in, in making sure of being credited for the things they had achieved. And when Uncle Will died in 1912, Orville um, more or less had the spotlight of the world on him. Orville was very mindful that everything about what they discovered was done by a team. Following that historic flight in 1903, the Wright Flyer was recovered for the aircraft was then shipped to the Science Museum in London where it rested for a number of years. It is that material from the recovering that is being used in these watches. And that material has only ever been given to presidents, 
and the likes of astronauts. Neil Armstrong, for example, took it to the moon on his first ever mission. And it's the only time this material is going to be used in a project of this scale. So this is a very fitting project for us, a world first in aviation, but a world first for Bremont, the first in-house movement designed and built in the UK. So it's incredibly appropriate for this to go into this particular watch. As with all our limited editions, there's a large charitable element to it. In this case, um, a significant proportion of the uh, funds raised will go to the restoration of uh, Wilbur and Orville's family home. Uh, to be opened as a museum and I'm really pleased to be part of that. The Wright brothers were amazingly pragmatic engineers and in watch terms we can kind of relate to that. For an aviation inspired watch this is going to be a hard one to beat. Right fly, ladies and gentlemen, and to talk a little bit more about it, Nick, Giles, come back up on the stage, and ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our very special guest tonight, Amanda Wright Lane, the great great niece of the Wright brothers. Well, Amanda, we heard you explain so eloquently about how your your esteemed relations came up with the ideas and how hard they worked. What made you want to team up with Bremont to put a little bit of history into their watches? Well, actually it was a very easy decision. Um, I think the first thing I understood about these two brothers is that they were pilots also. So, especially when you're in a room like this, you understand, when you look at these flying machines, you understand risk. But I think as pilots, these guys also understand the exhilaration of flying. So right away I knew they had an understanding of what um, the right brothers history is meant to the world. Um, secondly, I like the idea that they tell stories. They remind us of very famous things that have happened in history and they sort of um, bring them back to us again in, the, in their special edition watches and I think that's a really admirable thing to remind people of great stories. And lastly, um, the product itself. Watches are, in some ways, they're a throwback to a time before we actually needed watches to tell time. And now they become so much more of a statement, um, their way of life, and I love the idea that they're, the quality, the integrity of their product is just, it's very, it's lovely. So, it's been fun working with them. Boys, you've just got yourself a new marketing spokesman, I think. This is fantastic. I feel like I'm going to be the straight man between the two of you. That's what I'm worried about. <laughs> now, Nick, it won't come as a surprise to any of us here to, to know that you're probably quite excited when you first held that special material from the original Wright Flyer. As he... <coughs> um, is that quite incredible. Um, we're actually lucky enough to have the piece here, which... Um, if I can... The big reveal. The big reveal of the, the material itself. So to know that this is a kitty hawk, flying on the December the 19th, 1903, the first ever airplane to fly, it just blows my mind. So I remember meeting you guys in New York and being handed this piece of cloth, and uh, it's quite a funny story. So I was bringing this back to England, and Giles was flying back, he was off to Isle of Man that day, and I was going back to London, um, and Giles, before I got on the airplane, we both the planes were leaving at much the same time, and Giles, Giles gave me this, came out, out of his pocket, he pulled this big blue pill, he said, try this Nick. So I took this blue pill, got on the airplane, and I just was, oh my god. And I was just holding this sort of effectively priceless, this, this piece of material has been valued as priceless by three different auction houses. So you're, you're off your face with this pill that Giles has given you, trying to hold this priceless material. But honestly, for us it's the... Uh, the Turing Shroud, I mean, so it's, it's amazing. Have you got that? I can't quite believe that you actually do anything that your brother says <laughs> after yeah. all these years. Don't take any pills that he gives you. Don't sleep so very well when travelling around the world. <laughs> yeah, I point out the Turing Shroud is fake, whereas that's not. So that's, that's the difference with the Turing Shroud. 
Now, Giles, you referred in the film to some new mechanisms, some new clever innards in this particular limited edition. Tell us a bit about that, and why is it taken until now for you to bring that in? Just uh, as a business, in anything you're developing in watches, it takes huge amounts of time and investment. And we've been going through this, this big investment scheme. We're still very reliant on Switzerland, and we will be for the foreseeable future. But what we wanted to do is have a movement that effectively we own the design of, we're very active in that whole design process, um, but something that we could start building in the UK. So, um, hence this is that big step forward, we're less reliant. And, it, and if you look at it, it's, it's unbelievably beautifully finished. Um, so much time and effort goes into it. And, and we felt for a watch like this, it would require something really that special. Now, Mandy, you've heard how excited the boys were to actually hold that piece of material, but tell us why why is it not hanging in the Smithsonian alongside the right flies? Well, it's an interesting story about the fabric. On December 17, 1903, the brothers flew four times. And that day they were discussing, should we have another flight? Should we stop and have a cup of tea? And a gust of wind picked up the flyer and tossed it down the beach, just like a beach ball. So the flyer was destroyed. And the Wright brothers, being the Wright brothers, were very practical men. They, they packed up all the bits, the cloth, the wood, the, the metal uh, pieces, and took it back to Dayton, Ohio, maybe thinking someday they would reuse those parts. Um, in the meantime, they went on to build a couple of their flyers. The pieces remained in their shed. Um, in 1913, Dayton, Ohio suffered a, a flood that was incredibly um, incredible in terms of magnitude. The cloth and the wood were actually in the shed, floating, uh, they were part of the flood. And um, they were sort of a bit forgotten, but um, the Kensington Museum in 1927 uh, contacted Uncle Orv and said, Orville, we, we would love to hang your flyer and tell the public exactly what this flying machine has done. So Uncle Orv went to the shed, put the airplane back together in terms of the wooden bits and the the uh, metal pieces, but the cloth, a lot of it was too damaged by the flood to save. So he carefully packed up the bits that were uh, saveable, put them in a lovely box, and hid them away, and then forgot where he hid them. So uh, years later, after he died in 1948, um, the family was going through his office, and a tucked away in a box high up on a shelf were these beautiful uh, remnants of the 1903 flyer. And he had carefully labeled each one. This particular piece is from the lower left wing, we know that. So um, it's very, very special. And um, as alluded to in the um, movie, when uh, NASA understood what was going to happen on the moon in 1969, and um, Neil Armstrong understood that he would be the first astronaut to sit, set foot on the moon, he, he worked with the family to take a piece of this cloth with him, and when that first footprint was made, a bit of the first flyer was in, um, in the uh, pant leg of his spacesuit. So it's a very, it's, it's seen a lot of history and will continue to make history, I think, as well. So. And, it's, and it's an extraordinary legacy, isn't it? I mean, the whole right flyer influence is just, well, it's, it's, it's inexplicable, isn't it, to an aviator like yourself? I mean, it's, it's beyond compare. Well, so that's where it all started, isn't it? So, so for us, uh, as we kept saying, you know, when you're when you're thinking of uh, an aviation limited edition, and Giles and I were thinking of it for a long time. So, if you could do the best aviation limited edition in terms of historical content, where would you go? And obviously, it's a right flight, but no, you know, in the wildest dreams, we think you'd end up with a piece of it. Um, it's very much thanks to to Amanda and the Wright family for letting it happen, but it's. Uh, Oh, very humbling, actually, very humbling. From our side. Sorry, from our side, it's juggling here. Um, we've got to do it proud, because Amanda's trusted us, this little company in Britain, to, to do something like this. And we can't, we, we, it's keeping that Wright Brothers name going. It's incorporating, incorporating to a watch which which we believe is, is, is going to be totally unique and uh, it's been a lovely relationship working with Amanda on this. How long has it been in development? Uh, it's a good couple of years. I'm also on the movement that the actual physical watch has been working on a long time. And then we got this hint that this bit of material was out there and then we got in contact with Amanda and obviously it's, it's, she had to feel very happy with us and what we're trying to do with it. And, 
Um, obviously, we show when we're done with Victory and Code Breaker and introduce them to the museums and that sort of thing. So, um, it's working on that. And Amanda, as we saw in the film, all these limited editions have a charitable element as well, and we heard that yes. proceeds from the sale of this watch are going yes, to go towards yes. your family trust. So, tell us a bit more about that. Yes, well, um, uh, the Family Foundation has been working for years to um, restore and preserve aviation artifacts, but most recently in 2006, Verbal Rights Home was given to the Family Foundation, which has been a huge treasure to us. And I love the fact that this will be, thank you, that this will be um, the first uh, bit of right history that's actually about them as men, not just inventors of the flying machine. So you all have a personal invitation to come to Dayton, Ohio, and I would be happy to take you a tour of Orville Wright's home. And um, we're very proud of the fact that we'll be able to tell family stories there and stories of the men behind the flying machine that changed the world. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here. You have an invitation to Dayton, Ohio. I do. <laughs> Thank you so much for talking to us. Amanda, Nick, Giles, really very good to hear the whole story of this wonderful watch. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the party now continues. You have a whole host of entertainment and all sorts of good fun stuff going on. Magicians, there are contortionists. I don't think there are any relations. I don't think so. Of the English brothers. Uh, we have a vintage photo booth at the back as well. So do just absorb the whole atmosphere and do get involved. But before that, I'm delighted to welcome back to the stage, Blake. <laughs>